Last month, one of the pro members shared a really interesting landing page reveal concept in the Video Ideas channel. It was inspired by a website that had received an honorable mention on awards some time ago. The idea itself is something we have been seeing quite a lot lately across modern award winning sites, usually with small variations and subtle tweaks. As this site loads, the images animate in, gradually tighten their spacing, and then begin to collapse, eventually leaving a single image at the center, which transitions directly into the main landing experience. I have been noticing this pattern more and more on recent projects, and I thought it would be worth taking some time to recreate it and break it down properly. At the same time, I have been deep into work on this month's website template for pro members, so for today's video, I wanted to focus on something a bit more relaxed, purely about animation flow and sequencing, and this concept fit that perfectly. So I spent a couple hours recreating this loading sequence using GSAP timelines and split text, putting together a version that stays very close to the inspiration. Projects like this are a good reminder of how much you can do with basic GSAP timelines once you are thoughtful about the properties you animate and how you sequence them. If you find these kinds of rebuilds helpful, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Let's start with the HTML. First, I'll create a nav element. This will hold the main navigation that sits on top of the hero section. Inside the nav, I'll split things into two blocks, one for the logo on the left and one for the navigation items on the right. So I'll add a div with the class name nav logo and below it, I'll add another div with the class name nav items. For now, I'll just drop in a few placeholder links in both of them. The exact links don't matter here, we just need enough structure so the navigation feels realistic while we focus on the animation. Next, I'll add the main hero section. This will act as the main container for the entire landing experience. Inside the hero, the first thing I'll add is a div with the class name Hero Overlay. This overlay is a key part of the effect. It sits on top of the page initially and later on, we'll animate it away to reveal the content underneath. Inside the overlay, I'll add a div with the class name counter and inside that, I'll place a single h1 element starting at 0. This will act as our loading counter which will animate using GSAP as the sequence plays. Next, still inside the overlay, I'll add a div with the class name overlay text container. This container will act as a small viewport for cycling text. We'll keep it fixed in place and animate the text inside it vertically. Inside that container, I'll add another div with the class name overlay text. This will be the element we actually move during the animation. Inside it, I'll add a few placeholder text lines. These lines will animate in sequence as part of the intro, helping set the tone before the main content is revealed. Now let's focus on the images. Below the overlay, I'll add a div with the class name Hero Images. Inside this container, I'll paste 5 images. Each image is wrapped inside its own div with the class name image. For the middle image, I'll add an additional class name hero image. This lets us treat that image differently later on. So while the other images animate out, the center one can stay visible and transition into the landing view. Finally, I'll add the main header. I'll create a div with the class name hero header and inside it, I'll place a single h1 element with the brand name. This header will stay hidden at first and will animate it in only after the intro sequence finishes. That's all we need for the HTML structure. Next, let's move on to the styling and start shaping how this entire sequence behaves visually. First, I'm importing two fonts from Google Fonts. One will act as the main typeface for the layout and the other will be used for smaller interface text like navigation links and overlay copy. Next, I'll define a couple of color variables at the root level, one for light value and one for the dark value. We'll reuse these throughout the layout so the color system stays consistent and easy to adjust later. Then, I'll reset some defaults, I'll remove all margins and paddings, and I'll set box sizing to border box for every element. Next, I'll style the body, I'll set the main font family here so it applies across the entire page by default. After that, I'll style all images, I'll make sure images always fill their containers and scale proportionally without distortion. Next, I'll style anchor tags and paragraph tags together. I'll remove any default decoration, force everything to uppercase, switch the font to mono typeface and give it a consistent weight and line height. This gives us that clean, editorial interface look that works well for these layouts. Now let's move on to the navigation. I'll position the nav so it stays fixed at the top of the page. It spans the full width and uses flexbox to push the logo and the links to opposite sides. I'll also align items toward the top. 
Next, I'll style the navigation items container. I'll stack the links vertically and align them to right so the navigation feels compact and restrained. Now, let's move on to the hero section. I'll position the hero relative and make it fill the entire viewport. I'll also hide any overflow so nothing leaks outside during the animations. Next comes the hero overlay. I'll position this absolutely so it stays on top of the hero content. It fills the entire screen and uses the dark background color. By default, it's fully visible and will later animate its shape to reveal the content underneath. I'll also add a will change hint here because we'll be animating the overlay shape during the intro. Now inside the overlay, I'll style the counter. I'll position it in the bottom corner and switch the text color to light so it stands out against the dark background. Then I'll style the counter heading itself. I'll give it a large clean appearance so it feels bold and deliberate without being decorative. Next, I'll move to the overlay text container. I'll position it in the opposite corner of the screen and give it a fixed height with overflow hidden. This container acts like a window. Only one line of text is visible at a time while the rest moves behind it. Inside that, I'll style the overlay text wrapper. I'll stack the text vertically and shift it slightly out of view by default. This prepares it for the vertical sliding animation later on. I'll also add a will change hint since we'll be animating this element repeatedly. Then I'll style the individual text lines. I'll set their color to light, give them a consistent height and vertically center the text inside each line. This ensures every phrase lines up cleanly as it cycles. Now let's move on to the images. I'll start with the main image container. I'll position it in the vertical center of the screen and stretch it horizontally across the page. I'll use flexbox to center the images and leave gender spacing between them at start. That spacing is intentional. We'll animate it later to bring the images closer together. Next, I'll style each individual image wrapper. I'll give them a tall editorial aspect ratio and offset them downward while scaling them down. They also start fully invisible. This gives us a strong starting point for the revel animation where the images rise into place, scale up, and fade in together. I'll also set up a clipping shape here. This allows us to later collapse the image vertically instead of fading them out. Now let's move on to the hero header. I'll position it near the bottom of the screen and stretches across the full width. I'll also send it behind everything else. This way, it stays hidden until the overlay clears. Next, I'll style the main heading itself. I'll force it to uppercase, center it horizontally, and give it a large, bold presence with tight line spacing. This is the main brand movement, so it needs to feel confident without overpowering the visuals. Now, there is one important detail here. You'll notice a word class being styled inside the heading, even though it doesn't exist in the HTML. That class is automatically generated by split text in JavaScript. When we split the heading into individual words, split text wraps each word in an element with this class. By default, I'll shift each word downward and prepare it for animation. Finally, I'll add a few responsive adjustments on smaller screens. I'll tighten the spacing in the navigation, reposition the counter slightly, reduce the spacing between images, and allow the images themselves to scale up so the layout feels balanced. None of this changes the animation logic. It just ensures everything remains readable and composed across different screen sizes. And that takes care of the styling. We are ready to move into the JavaScript and start wiring up the animation timelines. First of all, I'll import JSAP. This is the core animation library we'll use for everything in this project. Next, I'll import custom ease. We'll use this to define a single easing curve that keeps the motion consistent across the intro. Then I'll import split text. This will let us split the hero heading into individual words so we can animate them later. After that, I'll register both plugins with GSAP. This step is required before we can actually use them inside timelines. Next, I'll create a custom easing curve called hop. This will become our main easing style and we'll reuse it throughout the sequence. Now, I'll grab the counter heading from the DOM. This is the element we'll update as the loading number changes. Then, I'll create a simple object to hold the counter value. We'll animate this number with GSAP and write it into the DOM on every update. Next, I'll wrap everything inside a DOM content loaded event. This just ensures all elements are available before we start working with them. Once the DOM is ready, I'll split the hero heading into words using split text. I'll also enable masking and assign a custom class name called word. Next, I'll create three timelines, one for the counter, one for the overlay text, and one for the main reveal sequence. Keeping these separate makes the animation easier to manage and reason about. Finally, I'll build the counter animation. I'll animate the numeric value from start to finish, and on every update, I'll round the number and update the counter text. This gives us a smooth loading count without trying to animate text directly. Next up, we'll animate the overlay text and start building the visual rhythm of the intro. This timeline is responsible for the small text that cycle 
vehicles in top corner during the loading sequence. I am animating the entire text wrapper instead of each line individually. Because the container has overflow hidden, only one line is visible at a time. First, I'll move the text wrapper into view. This brings the first line into the visible area. Then after a short pause, I'll move it upward again. That shifts the second line into place. Next, I'll repeat the same movement one more time. This reveals the third line. And finally, I'll move the wrapper up once again so the text fully exits the container. Spacing out these movements with small delays helps the text feel paced and intentional instead of rushing through all the messages at once. Now let's move on to the main reveal timeline. This is where most of the visual transition happens. First, I'll animate all of the images into view. They move upward from their offset position, fade in at the same time and reveal one after another with a small stagger. Next, I'll animate the spacing between the images. I'll gradually tighten the gap, which makes the images feel like they are being pulled together toward the center. While that's happening, I'll also scale all of the images up to their final size. Overlapping these two animations keeps the motion feel continuous rather than broken into separate steps. After that, I'll start removing the outer images. I'm targeting every image except the center one and collapsing them vertically using a clipping animation. This makes the images feel like they are being physically removed from the layout. Next, I'll scale up the center image. This allows it to take visual priority and naturally transition into the main landing view. Once the images are resolved, I'll animate the overlay out. I'll collapse the overlay upward, which reveals the page underneath and clears the way for the final content. Finally, I'll bring in the hero heading. Each one animates upward into place with a slight stagger using a cleaner easing curve. This timing is important. The brand name only appears once the visuals have fully settled. And that completes the full reveal sequence. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.